So I did a poll recently asking what you guys would like to see next as far as CRT videos and the winning answer was an RGB mod to the Sony KV-13 TR-28 television. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to jump in here and we're going to add RGB to this television. And the reason that this one is so special is because this is honestly one of the easiest RGB mods. It's all because of the chassis on this set and one little part in particular, that being this, the closed caption card on this set. And that plugs into the main board, but you can remove this card and then inject RGB and that's what we're going to do today. So I will have everything segmented in chapters if you want to check out each section. Plus there's going to be a ton of detailed information in the description of this video that I would recommend you checking out if you're going to attempt this mod or if you want more information on this mod. We're going to start things off by building the SCART input. And this is going to be our input we'll be using on the back of the television to physically input RGB and sync in the form of 240p or 480i video. So we're going to build that SCART input first. Here we go. On the CRT database, there's a guide that I've linked written by Matt Ross. He wrote this amazing guide and, and it explains why we're going to use SCART and also gives us SCART pinouts and a guide on how to build basically the perfect SCART uh, input for our RGB modification. So we need to have a new SCART input, looks like this. We're gonna need three 75 ohm resistors and we'll also need three 0.1 microfarad capacitors. Here's the capacitors, 0.1 microfarad, 50 volt, and these are radial. Got some really large 75 ohm resistors. I also have my switch. And then I don't actually have a thousand ohm resistor here, but I have 470 ohm resistors. So what I'm gonna first try to do is put two of these 470s in series and go with like 940 total resistance. And I think that will be close enough to a thousand to have it safely work on our switch for uh, engaging our RGB mode and then all we need is just some wiring. I've got some leftover wiring. I do have some heat shrink tubing. Here's an example of that. We'll get the ground loop done first as it is on the instructions, but again, I don't have this exact solid core wire. I'm using um, just whatever kind of materials I have here to do this. But if you wanted to do better and make it look super clean, you could buy that wire. Okay, so the SCART input that I have on hand is right here. So the, the bottom row of pins down here has more pins than the top row. And the top row is our even numbers. So we're starting over here and we have number two all the way over to 20. And then over here we have number one all the way over here where it's actually in the outside plate. And that's pin 21. These are gonna be our important pins to worry about. We're gonna need to attach a cable to pin pin four, five, nine, eleven, and thirteen and fourteen, seventeen and eighteen, and twenty-one are grounds. Those are gonna be connected to the ground loop, and that's where we're gonna start. So this would be pin four right here on the top. So I need to bend it around and have it touching pin five. So I need to have four touch five first. Connection. So let's put some solder on. So yeah, we've, we've attached pin number four here to pin number five, okay? We need to now have the number 14 pin down here and then that 18 pin bent over, 14 touching 13. So 14 to 13 first off, right there. Eighteen to seventeen. I'm gonna try this out. There we go. So leg number one's connected. Now let's take a look at what we've just done. We've connected one, two, three, four, five pins on the ground loop together. 
Okay. Looks like we may have done it. Let me see. Bend that like around that little post. Solder that up. Make myself a nice connection point for that ground right there. Like that ground wire. Oh yeah. So we now have pins 21, 17, 13, 9, and 5, and 4, and 14, and 18. All connected on a loop. So we're going 15, 11, and 7 for red, green, and blue. And we're going to add these 75 ohm resistors to our ground. So we need to basically connect from the three color signals with this resistor to ground somehow. And this is a fat resistor. This is going to be tricky. Okay. So one side of these resistors is on the ground loop. The other side of the resistor connects to our red, green, and our blue pin. See, we'll connect one end of this little guy to each one of these. Now we've got our terminated red, green, and blue that is also tuned to 0.1 microfarad. Now let's install some cables. We've got audio and we're going to connect a ground to the white cable I'll attach to the audio and then the black one I'll attach to ground. And then I need to connect that blue over here. Just get a little solder on my tip. Or that line and that component together. We'll do that. There's our three color lines. Red, green, and blue. Sync needs to go to pin 20. 20 is right here. Okay. Sink, baby. Whew. I made the job as almost as difficult, I think, as I possibly could have. So we've got our tuned red, green, and blue here. So they go into the one or the 0.1 microfarad capacitor here. All those three. And then we've got our ground loop here, and we're connecting to our ground loop in three places. We're doing it for our audio. We have a one that we're going to connect close to all the video lines. And then we have another one that's going to connect with the sync line down here. And then under here is our sync. And under here is our audio. And then these are just the three resistors. And there we go. The scart head is built. This is the way I'm going to wire my switch so that I have my resistors on one end. The middle is just going to be no resistors, just the, the standard wire. So we'll just do it like that. Get that heat shrink over top of that side. That's like the prep work for our switch there, as well as the RGB modification. So here they are, finished. The switch and the RGB input for our SCART. Well, now that we finished up with our SCART input, let's disassemble the CRT so we can get it ready to modify for RGB input. So now we're going to do the discharge. I don't know if there's a, a, a resistor built into this Trinitron set, but there probably is. But let's just, let's see what we get. I'm going to lift that up. Let me see the anode. No, I really want you to see it in case it does spark. There it is. Let's see. Ah. 
No. Unfortunately, unfortunately for the drama, there's nothing really there. Right there. So we will we'll tap, come back and tap that ring right there. Okay. So not much drama on that one. I think I just lifted that and it kind of slips back. And then there's something on the other side I do need to disconnect. That's my speaker. It's my little speaker connection. That goes off there. There's a degausser. So uh, this is our closed caption card right here. Just like on our plan said, can you see right here? Closed caption on that CN101. It labels the RGB and YS is the blanking pin. That's the ones we want. And then we have five volt over here. Reba, <laughs> Reba, you know, you know, Sam, I love, I love the uh, fact that somebody would ask. I didn't even realize they were asking me to say Reba. That's hilarious. Like Reba, Reba is in one of the best made for TV cheesy Westerns you'll ever see with Kenny Rogers. It's like the gambler part four. So this is the front side of our chassis. This is the back side. Now I'm going to have this so that my lines go, I don't know where I'm going to mount this thing yet, but it's going to go on that plate somewhere. Maybe like up here like this. I'm going to give it a couple of extra inches of cabling. Yeah, I don't know who I pissed off today to have them send all their bots to my stream. It's like, God, it's just scary what to think will happen next if people don't knock it off. We have yellow for red, green and blue for green and blue. I'll strip these back. We're about to connect this to our board here. Hot air machine. Tighten up those little spots there. Okay, that's good. So we finally got it. There we go. Guys, if you're enjoying the stream, I know it's a little unconventional, but if you're enjoying it, do me a favor. Drop me a, uh, a like down there if you can, and that way more people will be able to come in and see whether I'm successful or a big fat failure. <laughs> is this going to work? So we could all have fun together at my expense, which is totally cool and awesome. So we're going to use a couple different ground points over here because those will be fine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the guide and we're gonna go in to VN over here on section 402. I'm gonna go VN and then see there's right under that says LN. So that's where I can go for my audio because that's, that'll be my audio side. And then I'll go VN, I'll do the, and then I'll connect a couple of those ground points. This is going over here for audio. sink on the other side and then there's another E I can connect to right next to it so I don't have to the, the point of doing it in a ground loop like that is so it has a couple different spots and it all loops together on a good ground that's in there now check it out we've got the ground line next to sink red is sink white is audio and then black is just the ground for audio may just be checking out some amazing rgb footage here in a second this is what two days of stream work all boils up or down to is the moment we're about to embark upon 
This is our degaussing cable. It goes into the power supply. This is a connection that's just a ground. I'll just put that on the cap this time. There we go. Just, you don't need a lot. Rub that around. The brutus dog hair out of there. Saying I'm just rubbing that jelly. Rubbing that lube around there. So it be nice and protected. Alright, there we go. That puts us to the last board to put in here, and that's this neck board. And back on there. Look at that. That's all we need to do. It's uh, it's all up to the hands of fate now. So let's go ahead and get something SCART. I'm gonna make sure everything's working. I've got a SCART cable here that I'm about to use. I do have a backup one with different type of sink. Okay, set's not powered on. Let's see. Okay, I see. I don't, I mean, nothing's blowing up yet. Oh, <laughs> so there we go. Let's see. Hopefully that'll turn it off. There we go. Look at that. Off regular video mode. RGB mode enabled. Bam. Bam, baby. How you like them apples? Now, I know it looks extremely dim, but I have to turn... I had to turn video settings way down just to try to get the, uh, the, the screen to kind of show up on camera. So let's, let's increase our picture. Actual RGB on the set. Awesome. And again, we still have our complete service menu available in this thing. So we're pumping stereo, we're pumping stereo audio just through this little, I don't know, it's like a five or 10 ohm speaker, uh, maybe even less than that. It's not much, but it's, it's cool to have it there. And again, it has just a SCART input. The switch, I'll probably put it under here, install it, maybe, I don't know. Then I have to take the whole thing apart to do that. I may just, if I can find room on that back plate. Look, I'll be honest with you. As far as like doing this job, this is this is the easiest rgb mod thank you thank you everybody this was the easiest rgb mod i've ever done i've installed our rgb input back here on the plastic plate that has the coax input and our regular av input down here here's our rgb input in the form of scart and it's been epoxied into place. And then I also have my switch down here. And if you click that switch, that will switch between using this input for RGBS and this regular composite video input for video line one. Right now I have composite video and mono audio going into video one. And the switch is turned up, which means this input is turned on. So there we have Super Mario World. That is composite video right there. So now what we'll do is we will switch this over to SCART input. Got my SCART cable plugged in. I'm going to flick my switch to down. And there we have it. Now we're in RGB mode. Wow, this RGB signal is amazing. We've really cleaned up a lot of the colors and the resolution has increased exponentially. Now let's take a second to compare composite versus RGB video. On the screen here you'll see Mario is in composite video on your left hand side and then on the right hand side I've split it off to show you the RGB signal 
The RGB signal is just miles sharper, cleaner, and better all around. Well, that's it for the modification. It works great, looks amazing. But if you want more information, I do have a lot of links detailed in the description of this video. So please do check those out if you need, again, more information on this modification. And thanks again for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time with some more retro content.